Hey, hey guys, so what's up? Um, the other day I was playing a practice session with Simon Bargic, uh, he's Snua on Galaxy, and we had a consultation we were playing and um, against XG, and we had a few disagreements on some of the opening replies. And it's pretty crazy how two fairly decent players, uh, I guess we are, uh, shouldn't really have a problem um, on the opening responses. I mean, chess grandmasters learn positions, you know, 20, 30 moves deep. Um, so there's this site called bgquiz.com. Uh, here it is. This is the home page. And if you click on opening replies on the top left, you come to this screen um, and click start. And it has a quiz with 425, basically all of the responses um, to the opening. So sorry, it's a bit small, but I won't be on the screen for long. So here, say black rolls a 4-1 and plays to the 9 point and the 23, and we've got a 5-4 to play um, choices. So I think 24-15 is the right play. I click that multiple choice option. Um, and here we go. You see, I was wrong. It's better to hit on the uh, 1 point and split to the 20. It's actually, now that I think of it, um, a good position because the logic, I think, is when the opponent has a builder on the nine point, it's very, very powerful and threatening and, and he's about to do good things. So you nearly always need to make the action play uh, when when he's brought one down to his nine point. So hitting and, hitting and splitting uh, was better by 0 0.008. So this site's really good because you can see not only the top play, but the, the equity differentials. Uh, I'll just show you one more. Uh, so here, opponent split with a three and come down with a four. And we've got a four three to play, so it's right to hit on the uh, four point. These are quite difficult, actually. It's definitely right to hit on the four point, and now we've got a three to play. The question is, do we play to the 21 or come down to the 10? I think we come down to the 10. Um, because it's six away from the point we're hitting, it's connected, and we don't give them a good uh, five from the nine point. So my option is going to be uh, eight, four, thirteen, ten. Is it there? Ah, yeah, there it is. Thirteen, ten, eight, four. Okay, so I got the right play this time. Uh, yeah, it was right, and it, um, you can see all the other plays. So I went through this entire quiz. Uh, there are 425 positions. Uh, I discounted, for example, if the opponent rolled um, a 6-2 and ran uh, 24 to 16 because no one plays that. Even at double match point, it's the wrong play. It's better to come out and down. Um, so I just did all the responses uh, to normal openings. Like I didn't bother with 2-1, uh, someone playing 24-21 as well because no one really does that. It's not worth memorizing or, you know, it's interesting, but for this purposes, there are about 400 positions of normal uh, responses. And I was quite disappointed in myself. I'd done this maybe over a year ago, quite a long time ago, and I managed to get, uh, I think, 51 wrong um, when I did it uh, yesterday morning. And my idea is I'm going to go through them all every day. It takes took me about an hour and a quarter to do the whole... 400 question quiz uh, and I'm going to go through it every single day for seven days if I've got time and chart my progress. So today I made 50 errors and I categorized an error as anything. Normally an error is 0 0.002 but openings come up so frequently and there's just no reason to give any equity away and I want to understand all these opening responses. So I used 0 0.005 as a cutoff. So anything that was 0 0.001, 0 0.002, 0 0.003, 0 0.004 I didn't bother with. It's not worth learning me, me learning something new. I'm basically there, so so close. But point I, I use point double oh five. Anything uh, there or above, uh, I counted as an error, and I got fifty wrong. And I took screenshots. On, I did it on my mobile phone, not on the PC. And I took screenshots um, of all the fifty one I got wrong. And then that night, I just flicked through them all, and deleted the ones that I got right the second time around. And I was left, I think, with 20. So already, uh, you know, that just, just by seeing the error straight away as they came up, I did it pretty quickly, the whole quiz in an hour and a quarter. I cut my errors from 50. Uh, I got 30 of those 50 right. Um, and then as the week progresses, I'd be interested to see 
by day seven if I'm getting all, practically all of them right, maybe just two or three wrong, I hope, uh, with the learning process. So one part is the pattern recognition just by doing the quiz over and over. Um, and the other thing I thought to myself was, just to think out loud, I'm gonna vlog it for you. Maybe this is more of an intermediate vlog because it's about the opening responses and they may be well covered elsewhere, I'm not sure. Um, I saw a post actually on Galaxy the other day where someone asked uh, which books are good for it. I know Nak Ballard wrote a book on third roles, uh, but it's quite limited to just a few of them. It's very good as far as it went. But this, this vlog's just gonna be concerned with openings, uh, responses. And actually I've broken them down into three parts. I'll come on to that in today's parts, two of the three, which are the easier parts I think, which is when the opponent makes a point or when he runs. But just uh, very, very quickly, take me 20 seconds just to go back to basics. My seven-year-old is very keen on backgammon. I thought, how would I teach him the openings? Um, and I thought the quickest way I came up with was basically anytime you can make a point, you do so. So say three, one, you make the five, four, one, you make the four, sorry, four, two, you make the four, five, three, you make the three, and six, four, you make the deuce. Obviously the players are very close with the six, four, whether you come out and down or run all the way, but six, four certainly doesn't give anything away. It's absolutely fine. It's right at, uh, when you need a gammon. So we're gonna just consider that in terms of making points. Um, six, five, we run. Uh, running game, so sorry, 6 1, was, they were the inner wall points, but 6 1, uh, obviously, we make the bar. That's all the pointing numbers. Then there's 6 5, which we go into a running game. Um, 6 4, we just discussed it, they're all very close, but you could go into the running game with a so it starts like this, just, just racing 24 14. Um, but then all the other plays, all the other possible plays. Uh, it's right just to make the biggest split you can and come down. It's, it's uh, the exception of say 2-1 where it's very close, might be marginally right to slot. But for this purposes, um, we're just gonna say you never slot. I mean, 5-1 is not that bad either. But we either make the point where we can, run with 6-5, possibly with 6-4, but all the other plays. So like 6-3, we come out and down, 18 and 11. Six, sorry, that's 6-2, 6-3, the same. Um, We've gone through the other numbers, but just going down the list, five, four, uh, out and down, five, two, we're splitting down, five, one, we're splitting down. Um, four, three is actually one of the ex only exception where it's right marginally for money just to come down with two. But if you make the big splitting down, um, or, so, or the slightly smaller splitting down like that, it's really no big deal. Um, so where are we up to? 4-3, 4-2, we make the point. 4-1, um, this is the only way to split and down. 3-2, we make the biggest split we can and down. And 2-1, um, we split and down. So basically, if you can't make a point on run, all the way with 6-5, possibly with 6-4, you just make the biggest split you can and come down, other than 4-3, um, where you can bring two down. So that's basically the openings out of the way. And now, if we, so if, we, if I've broken them down into three plays, uh, making points, running, or splitting, uh, the splitting, uh, out of the 51 mistakes I made, I think almost all of them were coming from split, where you, know, you have choices whether to hit or to double split back. Or to, there's lots of combinations and options and a lot of duplication going on. It's quite difficult, some of them, and you need memory for some of them. Um, but just going, I think the, the purpose of today's vlog, just so I refresh myself so I never make a mistake when someone makes a point or runs. We're gonna go through all of those. Uh, hopefully the vlog won't last more than half an hour and then we should know what to do uh, anytime the opponent makes a point or runs. So let's start when he makes a point and I'll be, let's start with the best point, 3-1. So the key is, you know, part of it's pattern recognition and, and to be honest, I've, this is the fourth time this morning I've, this afternoon I've tried to shoot this vlog because I want to get it right and every time I've done it I've noticed new patterns and ways to think about it but the key when he makes an inner board point whichever one it is well maybe not the uh, if he makes the deuce point with 6-4 but when he rolls 3-1 4-2 or 5-3 priority is to split or make an anchor in his board as soon as you can it's just key so starting with 
<clears throat> if we go through, I like to do this metho methodically, doing double six to start, then double five, double four, double three, double two, double one, and then scan through the rest of the sixes. So six, five, six, four, six, three, six, two, six, one. That leaves you the rest of the fives, five, four, five, three, five, two, five, one. Then the fours, four, three, four, two, four, one. The threes, three, two, three, one. And the twos, two, one. And if you do it like that methodically, you won't miss any, but also when you're counting market losers or when you're counting shots, A, you won't miss any if you do it methodically, and B, you can often group so many of the rolls together, like nearly all the doubles play the same way, um, or certainly big doubles, um, and then big numbers like six, five, five, four play similarly often, and then the small numbers often play similarly. So I like to do it that way, uh, but find whatever is best for you. So after he's made a three, one, double six, Obviously, the powerhouse we come out and down. Um, double five is forced pretty much to make the three point. Um, double four is forced to make the five point. Um, and double three is the first decision with a double. And as I said, you always want to anchor as soon as you can or make an advanced anchor. Um, so that's with double three, that's two of them. And then we have a choice with the last two either to make our five, our three, or our 10. If we make the five, it strips the eight and leaves this six point stacked, it's a bit unbalanced. Um, the three point's a bit blur, you know, we can make that later and it um, strips the six as well and leaves your midpoint stacked. So the right play often gives you a very balanced game up and down, 21 and 10. We're gonna see this lots of times in the openings. Uh, we make the anchor and a nice point in our outfield and threaten to make in illable points and losing the shots. So that's right with a double three. Um, double two, same thing. Often with a double two, it's right to make the four and the 11, the vast majority of the time. Uh, when you're on a double two, uh, I'll just switch the dice so we can see it. But here, once he's made the five point, it's key to make that advanced anchor. So we anchor on the 22, and the last two we make the four. Um, Double one, usually it's right to make the seven and five, but it's marginally, ever so slightly. Obviously we're gonna make the five point, but with double one, it's right just to make the simple split like this. Doesn't leave um, the blot on the ace point, which gets hit by one, six, two, um, uh, two, five, and three, four. And also it's so key to split once he's made that five point, but, but they're very close. But this is slightly right, slightly better even. Um, so now we've done all the doubles, a 6-5, uh, let's just go through the combo shots, 6-5, obviously we run, 6-4 we run, um, whereas 6-3 and 6-2 we come out and down, 18 and 11 or 18 and 10 with a 6-3, 6-2. So the only thing you really have to remember in the openings after 3-1 so far, the rest is logic, this one you can't really figure out unless you know it. But it's borderline right to run with a 6-4, whereas 3 and 2, we come down. Um, it's probably to do with duplication of shots or something. I don't think humans are good enough to work that out. I mean, who could tell you that 6-4, uh, you know, this is wrong, but 6-3, this is right. It's just you have to memorize it and learn it. Um, so carrying on, if we go to uh, the start, we've done all the sixes, now we do... Um, obviously, we've done 6 1 makes the point. 5 4, no other choice but to play to the 9 and 8. We never slot basically when the opponent, we never slot when the opponent's made a point in board, except maybe after 6 4 with a, a 2 1 or a 4 1. We'll come to that later. But just don't slot when opponent's made a point. So 5 4, we have to come down. 5 3, although we do want to split, it's worth the, the making the point with 5 3. It's just a point in board and it's, it's the right play. 5-2, um, obviously we get split. It's the priority, not coming down. 5-1, we split. 4-3, we split. 4-2 makes the point. 4-1, um, we split. 3-2, um, we make as big a split as we can. 3-1 makes the point and 2-1, we split. So really, not difficult. If you remember the 6-4 you run, 6-3, 6-2 you come down. Everything else you just make the split or make a point. Very simple. And 4-2, very similar principles. Double 6 comes out and down. Double 5 you've got to make the, the 3. Double 4 you make. Well, double 4 is a bit different because now it's not blocked, so you can make the advanced anchor and the balanced game. 
better than making your five. So you make you do things on two sides of the board, make that key the 20 point and the nine points good. So double four, we can do that. This time double three is blocked where it wasn't after double five. Um, um, so we just make our board uh, very strong straight away. Double two is the same after a, a, a three one where we anchor and make the point. Now the only exception in the openings on the doubles between when he makes the five point and the four point is double one. Double one now, it's slightly better to um, make the seven and five rather than, but the five we're making either way, but it's right just to make the bar, our bar as opposed to split. And that just goes to show you the difference between the five and the four. The power of the five is so much bigger than the four in terms of priming potential, our priorities change. Against the five with a double one, we split, um, but we've got to remember against the level four, it's quite a bit right to to make the, the start our own prime. Um, so that's all the doubles against uh, four two. Now we go to the combo shots. So they're very similar. Six five we run. Um, six three we come out and down, and six two we come out and down. So exactly the same as after the three one. The only exception is six four. When we roll a six four, it's now right to just make the point in board. So when he made the five, we run all the way, but when he makes the four, we make the deuce point. Um, and now moving on five four, there's no other choice but to come down to the eight and split. Uh, fight for that anchor. Five three, no choice but to make the three. Five two, uh, we split. Five one, we split. Four three, we split. Um, four two makes the four point, obviously. Four one, we split. Uh, three two, we split. Three one makes the five point, and two one, we split. So all of them are the same. All the combos are the same except for six four. Um, after the four two compared to the five one. So moving on, when he makes the three point now, points get deeper. So double six, double five, um, double four all play the same. Double four we come to, come to the 20 and nine. Um, double three is the first uh, one that's a little bit different. And now we make the um, 21 and the 10. And that sort of, I think the thinking is it's an anchor neutralizes that three point he's made. It's almost like those checkers are burned, um, puts them out of play. Double two, no choice but to make the, the four and the 11. Um, and double one, uh, we make the seven and five. Um, moving on to the combos, six, five, we run. Six, four, we make the point, the same as after a four, two. He makes the inner ball point, we copy back. Um, so that's six, five, six, four. Six, three, six, two is always out and down. Six, one, we make the uh, seven point. Uh, five four splits as usual. Um, five three makes the three point as usual. Five two we can't split now because it's blocked, so we just come down. Again, we're never slotting when he's made a point. Five one, uh, we make the normal split. Um, four three. Uh, this is one of the exceptions. Is that, you know basically with a four three. Although I said you always make the bigger split as you can and come down with a four three. It's slightly. It's nearly always right to um, split to the 21, not the 20. And I think that's because he really wants to attack you on that five point, uh, the premium for him hitting you and us not hitting back and him establishing the five point. Uh, although we want to make up his five point, his four point anchor is also good and it doesn't allow him to attack us there. Um, so we split with the three this time uh, instead of the four. Um, so that's 4-3, four, 4-2 four, obviously we make the 4, 4-1 four, we just do the normal split, 3-2 um, we make the only big split we can, 3-1 makes the point and 2-1 we split as normal. So they're virtually the same uh, when, uh, when he rolls a 4-2 or 5-3, the responses are virtually identical, you don't have to learn them. Now 6-4, when he rolls a 6-4 there are some quite big differences. Double six, double five, double four, all play the same. Um, double three, 
it's still right to make the uh, same as after a 5, 3 or 4, 2. So after a 5, 3 to make the, the 10 and the 21. Uh, double 2 now, though the 11 and the 4 is much more powerful uh, than, than anchoring on the 22. I think the thing to think is when he's made the his deuce point, if he chooses that with the 6, 4, He's not got a great priming game because he's made the two and the eight. They're more than six apart. They're seven apart. So he can never make a six prime there, really. <clears throat> so we focus on counter priming. There's not the immediate rush to anchor, make an advanced anchor. So rather than, uh, you're going to see it's quite clearly right to, to make the 11 and four. Or point double or seven. It's not clear, but it's, it's just right uh, with a double two to do that. And double one. Obviously, uh, we make the seven and, and six. So six five runs all the way. Uh, six four is very similar to when he makes the, the four or the three point. We we, we just copy him uh, in return and make the point back. Six three six two is the usual uh, out and down. Six three and six two. Six one obviously makes our bar. Uh, but now this is the big difference. when we were five four. Uh, four three uh, three two all these splitting numbers four three um, and two one even I think five two is close but basically all the splits when he's made the, the deuce point he's 10 pips up in the race or minus whatever we roll but he's basically going to be up in the race uh, being on roll uh, unless you roll a big double and <clears throat> he's made a point which isn't really helpful for priming as I said but it's just a point, and if we split and he attacks us, it's harder for us to come in, and it's more of a blitz kind of point. So we don't want to split. Like that double two, you saw how it's right to make the 11 and four. Every other thing, like five, four, all, usually it's nearly always right to do that. But five, four, we just simply, uh, I'll just put that on five. <clears throat> five, four, we come down. Um, the same with five, two, although well, that one's close. Even five, one, uh, we slot now, it's one of the only times where it's right to slot when he's made a point. Um, four three, we come down. Four two makes the point. Um, four one, uh, we, we make the slot. Uh, there's no, if we split with the four, there's no one really. Uh, we, we, we make this play. Uh, three two, um, we come down with both. Three one makes the point and two one. Um, we play this rather than split. So the key is when he's made a 6-4, if you can make a point, make it 6-5 runs, but otherwise you just bring two down or do something constructive on your side of the board. Pretty simple once you know it. You know, that applies for all the opening early game. He makes a deep point, he's ahead in the race, like if he rolls double five, you just don't want to split into that structure. Um, you want to counter prime. Okay, so that, ah, oh, there's one more. That's all the inner board points. The only other point you can make is with a 6-1. Now after 6-1, um, we'll go through the doubles. This time double six is blocked to make the bar. So obviously we're gonna make his bar. So we make our bar and we've got two more. Um, we just make the deuce point, only leaves in fly shots and leaves checkers on the mid. Um, double five, there's no choice but to make the three. Double four, we do our usual balance game. Um, double three, uh, are usual like this, up and down. Double two, we don't need to come up. We're not getting primes that badly straight away. It's not like he's made it in a board point. The seven point's not actually that you know that great. So double two, we just do the usual 11 and four, which is, well, not usual because after the five and four points, we don't. But here, double two makes two points. And double one, uh, we make the seven and five. It's only really after three one that we that will make the big split the double the small extra split with double one so that's all of those six five obviously we don't want to dump a checker on the the deuce points so early in the game so six five is obvious six four uh we just run all the way six three we just run six um six, six three we just run six two we just run six run uh, six one makes the uh seven point Five four we make our usual down and split. Five three makes a three point. Five two our usual split. 
um, 5 1, uh, our usual split. Uh, 4 3, our usual split. It's one time we don't make the big split. Uh, so as I said before, you want to go to the 21 and the 9, usually with 4 3 uh, against the opponent's opening roll, if you can. So it's right like this this time, that's with 4 3. 4 2 makes the 4 point. 4 1, usual split. 3 2, usual split. Uh, and 2 1's an exception where we're losing the race by. Not losing the race, well, we are losing the race, but 2 1's just such a useless roll uh, that, that it's worth doing this and trying to make the 5 uh, slotting. So you just got to remember the, the 2 1. Um, actually, I think 5 2 you come down with both. That's one. Let me just check. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, what am I talking about? Also split after 6 1. Um, so that's all the point making numbers uh, covered. Now, uh, how long has this vlog been going on? Uh, 26 minutes. I think. Let's just have a look when opponent runs. Uh, so we've covered two of the three game types and I'll deal with a split maybe in a later vlog after I've, in about a week, once I've done a bit more thinking about it and I've done that quiz seven times in a row and should have hopefully practically mastered it by now, um, by then. So when the opponent runs with 6-5, um, we'll just go through the uh, big doubles, different type of themes, when he makes a point, different objectives. Obviously, double six uh, is, you know, powerhouse. The double five, all the other openings, we saw we made the three, but here uh, he's left, so we can attack and blitz. So obviously, double five, we do this, uh, this time. Um, double four, we make our usual 20 and nine. Now, double three, instead of up and down, this is a principle, I think, that works nearly all the time. You just go for the board and the reason is he's got a block and a stack structure where he's very likely to be leaving shots and eventually he's going to have to safety this lone block and the immediate board is such a threat he doesn't have a point in board there's no need to make that advanced anchor straight away so double three um so much more powerful to just make the board same thing with double two we don't need that anchor we just make the normal 11 and four um with double two and double one we make the normal seven and five for our prime um so that's all the doubles against the runner and then if we go through the combos six five um which is safety all the way copying him but six four if we if our plan if we try and run we're a down in the race by a pip and he's on roll and he's just giving him free twos and it's just useless so it's better to counter with making the deuce point after he's run with 6-4. Uh, so, sorry, when he's run with 6-5 and we roll 6-4. See, it's an error not to make the deuce point. But 6-3, 6-2 are the same as usual. 6-1 uh, obviously makes our 7. 5-4, same as usual. 5-3 makes a 3, same as usual. 5-2 um, is a bit of an exception this time. Uh, where you come down with two instead of making the split like we did against 6-1. That's why I got slightly confused. So after 6-5, um, I guess we're losing the race and the, the key is to try and counter prime and we just bring two down. Splitting to the 22 is just not that useful. It gives some good fives, I guess, as well. Um, so we know to come down with two with 5-2. Um, 5-1, we make the usual split. Um, moving on to the so that's 5-1, moving on to 4-3, make our usual play 21 and 9, 4-2 the usual 4 point, 4-1 four usual split, um, so that's 3-1, and then 3-2, yeah we've done that, we've done the 3-2, the only difference uh, <coughs> after 2-1, it's a bit like after a 6-1, we just remember to slot uh, the 5. Sorry, uh, yeah, that's the start. So if we roll 2 1 after a 6 5, we just remember to uh, try and counter prime him instead of trying to race and split. And we're not that desperate to get split and make an anchor. And he also can't attack us um, deep if he wanted to. 
And some of the fours, I guess like four two, double four are good for him anyway. And three one, so this is just the right play. Now the only other time it was right to run, even for even at double match point, opponent is wrong to run with six two or six three. It's better to, for him to play eighteen. Sorry, uh, to, with six two six three, he just plays eighteen eleven and eighteen ten. So we don't need to memorize these runners with six two six three. Uh, we'll figure it out on the fly if he does. But for the purposes of memorizing the useful opening responses to, to things that come up all the time, 6-4, some people do run, and it is right at double match point. And it's, they're very similar, the responses to 6-5, but we may as well go through them. Double 6, double 5, double 4, um, double 3, double 2, double 1. They all play the same as against the 6-5. They're exactly the same, every single one of them. 6-5 is the same, we run. 6-4 um, is different. 6-4, um, when he ran to the 13, it was right to make the deuce. For some reason, uh, the 6-4 is now right to play 18 and 9. Um, I can't tell you why. It must be due, due to some duplication of numbers or something. But it's just right to do that. Uh, let me just show you. Uh, yeah, 24, 18, 13, 9. And it's almost an error to make the deuce point, whereas it's right uh, after 6-5. And that just shows you where the computer... No human's good enough in first principles to work that out. That it's right to make the deuce against 6-5, but play 18-9 against 6-4 runner. But there you go, it just is. 6-3, um, 6-2, six, six, usual out and down. 6-1 makes the point. 5-4, usual out and down. 4-3 is a small exception. Um, usually on 4-3s, we split to the 21, not the 20, like that. But with 4-3 after a 6-4 runner, we split to... Here, and I think the reason is if we split to the like that it gives him a good deuce whereas the two here is blocked from 14 to 12 um, so it's marginally better to but quite a bit better to play make the big split to the 20 um, under you know diversifying not giving him a good two basically that's the right four three um, a four two we don't make the four because we can hit so we just hit and split um, put him on the bar um for one we make our usual play uh yeah um and then three two we hit and split obviously um three two three one makes uh the five point and the last one's two one where we just do our usual uh hit and split okay so how long has this vlog taken? This vlog has taken 32 minutes and I've chatted, you know, blurbed on a bit for two minutes at the start. So I think within half an hour, maybe I spoke a bit fast and you can replay it, but I've shown you all the opening responses when opponent makes a point or runs. Um, and I've tried to give you some logic behind it, or at least the way I think about them. So via a little bit of memory, a little bit of logic, a little bit of pat pattern recognition, and just remembering a few exceptions, you should get the number one XG play if you memorize and understand this video. Um, well, I'm going to watch it a few times myself just to make sure I remember it. Um, but hopefully it's useful and you won't make any mistakes uh, on the openings. After, as I said, after a week, some of the, the split ones are much harder when opponent splits. How do we respond? I'm going to go through them, work out some stuff for myself, some pattern recognition, some exceptions, try and derive some logic, um, you know, working it back from the machine's answers and so sort of my general backend log logic and film another half an hour to an hour vlog for you uh, next week on that should cover all the opening responses hope it was useful uh, take it easy